All right. So this is a, it's a humid day. We're supposed to have a bunch of rain today, so I don't know what welding stuff I'm going to get done. I'm going to do any welding stuff today. I haven't decided. I'm kind of working on it slowly, but uh, the other day I, I pushed too hard and wore myself out and uh, burnt myself out on a lot of things. So as a side project, I uh, well, also not side project but also i bought the metal enough metal to do my subfloor and raise it up which i'm going to work on if it starts raining when i can't work on that i can pull all the measurements off and start making my subframe or floor supports and get those in and get the insulation and stuff in here so i can start attaching everything in there and getting the tanks in the batteries in and everything and start making it look like a livable rig again versus a tore apart mess in all that said and said, done and done. Also, gotta match some stuff. I might have to move that metal in here in a second. Anyhow, I need to find out if this is gonna work. This is the current AC unit. It's tied to the bus or bus systems. It's tied to the ambulance system. It's actually tied and tied with the regular system. And one thing is, I'm gonna have my hot water diesel hot water heater tied into this so it can pre-warm the engine. I don't know if 5,000 uh, BTU is going to be enough to do it or not. I have the water system tied into it and the radiant floor tied into it also. But whenever I was out there and I bought this brand new, we hit a switch and this stopped working. I don't know if it's the unit, the fan stopped working, or if it was just the um, bad switch or the control thing that was in here that stopped working so I need to hook it up so I got me some jumper wires to hook it up this one needs some tape on it but they'll work for a test anyhow so I'm going to tie this down there okay so I'm going to hook this down and I'm not running this through a fuse like I should be doing I'm literally just running this to the ground and up and across and the wire is a fuse which means I'm hooking up the negative in the hot backwards right now. Alright. That was not any sparking. That was the thing I'm sitting on popping. Which is still enough to make you jump. Don't mind the middle out there. I need to sit up, adjust it. Let's see. Well, that didn't do nothing. Well, that should be, that might be grounded out though. Yes. Pull these things off. That looks like that goes in there. So. That's horrible, right? Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Now we got it going. Alright, well, that's good. I just need a little loop. God. God, that's horrible. <laughs> I just want to run for a second. I think I can find a new squirrel cage. If we can, that will work for everything. Um, what's this? Blue wire. Um, okay, so that works to see what the blue wire goes to. Blue wire doesn't go to anything. I don't think. Oh boy, that got warm. That might be at the end of its life for this little wire because this thing got really hot when I was running it just that little bit. Which usually means there's a 
problem on the thing and being that there's a screaming bearing it might just need to be replaced so i'm gonna open this up and we're gonna see if we can get in there one i want to clean it out really badly because i want to use it in my living space but i don't want to leave anything in there from before because it used to be an ambulance and two i want to see if there's a part number on that squirrel cage see if we can find a replacement if we can find a replacement, it'll change, well, it'll change a little bit how we mount it in here for future use. This is basically tied into the, the, the chassis system, so anytime I'm going down the road, I want to run the AC, I can run the AC in here and cool down my living space in here. Which is actually very advantageous. It's because I don't have to run any extra power to run the AC because it's tied into this chassis system. If I want to run heat, I, you just want to run your car or drive somewhere to heat it up. This will heat up the whole space back here because it will be very well insulated. Even though I'm adding space to it, I'm adding a lot of insulation value to everything. And so, that is what's going on. And I really, really badly want to get this off the floor and out of my feet right now. Really, really badly. And there's little contact stuff. House line AC unit hose specialist. St. Cloud, Florida. With the phone number attached to it. So I'll probably go to them to look for a part number. But what I think it happens is this goes through. Pulls probably from this side over and the scroll cage spreads it around. It's not that horribly tight. It has been sitting in here in the weather for a while. Anyhow. There's probably a little motor in the middle of it, and it cools it with the AC air. But, uh, and of course the warning says, do not take apart unless you know what you're doing, and you're authorized, author, authorized dealer. <laughs> it's been long enough now that I don't think there's an authorized dealer for it. At least not that I'm going to pay to do it. Yeah, flathead blade screwdriver somewhere in here. And I can just go and travel. Um. simpler than I thought it was. How does it look? Yeah, that's pretty darn simple if you ask me. Oh look, that's the thermostat right there. The blue rider wires are the thermostat. It had a thermostat control on it. These wires must be the heater, and this wire must be the cooler. Ooh, that is one thick thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's all one unit. I thought it would be two separate units, but it's designed as one unit. It's actually designed to look, do that. Well, the nice thing is there's a... It has a drip tray on it, so it pre-drips it out outside the rig. Which is fine. I'll have to get the... Yeah, I might just get the hose and not the pressure washer to clean it up. Don't know what that's for. It's probably some sort of overpressurations thing. Yeah, I think I can service this. I don't think I have to even worry about it. I think I can actually do work on it and clean the bearings. It looks like it can be split. with Texas. Huh? Plastic manufacturer in Texas. Yeah. Patent number on it. It's interesting. It pulls it from here. It also... Man, that's really hard to turn. 
Which I know why people want to delete it. They don't want to have this stuff in their living compartment in case it leaks. Which I really don't blame them for that. But I really regretted pulling my heater out of the bus. It would have been a nice thing to heat it up while going down the road from point A to point B. And since this has an air conditioner in it, it gives me a, another cooling source. And I could pull the heater out, but I'm going to keep it. Like I said, it's nice to drive down the road and have hot cab and a hot everything else without using any more energy than what you normally would. And being that these are made to have it, they actually need the extra heat dissipation. That's really kind of wonderful. reason but they play with a better pry bar than they do anything else. Look at that, it's out. Let me see. Oh look, we can service this for the most part. There's a little see the, the clips there? We can keep tearing this down and service it and maybe do something with the, the find the rings or the fairings for it and actually service it down to the basics. I'll see if I can find a replacement motor and blower for this and we'll go that route too if this ain't a viable option. But we might even be able to oil the, the blades and the motor itself. So I'm gonna find some pliers in here. See how those are together there? Yeah. All you gotta do is squeeze them together and it makes them loose enough to get it off. And then you can easily pull it off. See how it shrinks back down? So you're actually increasing the diameter by squeezing them together. And this is just clamped together, it's just holding there because it's um, spread in. And got a little rust holding it together too. Feed it separate both sides. Let's see if I can get in there so you guys can see. And I might have to put a little rust remover on there. Indention or something like that. Might just be the intention itself. Oh, come on. And sometimes it just takes a little force and wiggling. A little wiggle. Let's see, you can see it coming off. This wiggle it. A little short movement. There it comes. It's getting there. And a puller would be nice right now. I need to check, make sure there's no rank this way. Got a little movement. Oh god, it's hard to get off though. I don't have the strength, so just a little bit at a time wiggle it back and forth and pull. Ah, oh, it's off. There's one. I'll have to do the other one too. I have to put some lube on there whenever I put it back together. Remember, it goes together with that ring on it first. Well, there's one side. See, it used to be nice and shiny, now it's a rusty mess. But I think this thing sat empty for a while. Oh look, we pulled on this side some too. Okay. this done and back together I'm going to put it on the mount and put it up high somewhere and leave it there. Run the cable and get off my floor. That's one of the things that really drives me at the wall is having junk on my floor where I trip and almost kill myself. 
all the time. So it's a pet peeve of mine. And I'll put it off for as long as I can when I have other stuff going on, but sometimes it gets me. God damn it. Yeah, I snapped one ring off. I don't know. Maybe I should just replace it instead of trying to tear it apart. Uh, I mean, it works. There's probably some nice electromagnets in it, too. Hey, look, here's a 12 volt assembled mix one. Mexico. I didn't even get a new one. It has a part number on it. Actually, that part number is on the rubber here. The anti vibration rubber. Let's just see if we can pull it up. You look at that. Look at that nastiness. Which part of these I want to clean this and get. So their, their um, operating instructions here said if it's squealing like it was, it's the end of life of the motor. And just to replace it. So I'm going to probably pull this whole unit out and just see if I can take it up there and find a complete replacement. Because it would be easier just to drop a replacement blower motor in there, 12 volts that is. Hopefully it's not ridiculously high. Okay, so we, last time I was here, we, uh, sorry, it's been a couple days since I took this apart. Which I found a replacement that was close to the same measurements. I couldn't find the exact replacement, but it's actually a little bit smaller than the old one size by size and the openings about a two-thirds smaller it's still not a big big deal because I'll show you guys this, this horrible mess here that I got going on but um, size to size the units actually half the size openings so about 10% mm, smaller and this opening is a little bit smaller but for the most part it's 12 volt and it's a blower fan so I think this will work just fine. And since this one's a little smaller, I was kind of toying with the idea is like, well, can I flip it up this way? Can I flip it up that way? And whenever I install it in here, I'm gonna put this side towards the wall and I was just gonna come in with a little uh, bend in it and blow it off towards either through a little two inch plumbing pipe because that's the cheapest and easiest way to do it and have it blow up front in the bedroom and blow in the back and the, right there. <clears throat> But, I was thinking, well, if I could stick it up on end here and pull from there, but the biggest thing is this has to remain axis because this is where the air comes in. It comes in on, a little bit on both sides. This side, clear when it pulls in here, it pulls the motor down. This side just pulls and blows it out. And a squirrel cage fan looks, works interesting. There's more actually out there on squirrel cage fans, but basically it has this little plastic thing in the middle. And so half of it pulls from this side and the other half pulls from this side. And how it works is it's a centrifugal force. When this spins, it pulls the air in here and catches the blades and throws the air out here. So it pulls and blah. And uh, this by this, the pure, pure centrifugal force. It's kind of interesting. But anyhow, this is, I'm going to end up putting this in here. This comes with its own little resistor module. This is basically a power resistor. And you run the max motor here, and then you, you know, you can control how much you have by plugging into each one of these. We're not going to use this unit. I'm going to get a PWM controller that's rated for the amperage of this motor, and basically we'll use pith, uh, pulse width, pulse width. God, I can't talk today. Pulse width modulation. 
and we'll have a little uh, uh, PMW resistor that will change the pulses that this puts out to move the air and we want to use this this uses a lot more power and produces more heat and I'm more or less keeping this because I want to keep the AC in here so anyhow this is in here I haven't tested it up make sure it works anything like that uh, yet but uh, I'm really